Our world is filled with so many numbers and so much data. With all of this data, we need to be able to interpret what we can learn from all of this data, all of these numbers. In this concept, we're going to talk about some central tendencies, meaning what does the data tend to do? Or what does the data tell us? So there are different ways that we can look at data and describe what the data is doing. And so we're going to talk about the mean, median, and mode, but we're also going to talk about what's known as a range and what are known as outliers in a set of data. This is an introduction into statistics. And statistics is the study of analyzing sets of data to see what trends might be or what predictions we can make. So the first thing that I want to do for you is define some measures of central tendency. When we think about the word central, we're talking about things that are, that are centered. And tendency means what, what, is, what does the data appear to be doing? So what is the center of the data? If we were to look at a data set, what number are we getting close to? Or what number could we say that the next piece of data would be close to? So here's the first one that I like to define for you. And that's the mean. The mean is sometimes referred to as an arithmetic average. The mean is defined as this, or mainly how to find it. It's the sum of all the numbers divided by the number of values or pieces of data is another way to think about that. Now, a median is, if you think about a median when driving, it's the, it's the middle of a street or a road, and, and that's the same thing here when we talk about it mathematically. When we talk about a median, it's the middle number wants data has been put in order. Now, one more piece of central tendency or part of the measures of central tendency is what's known as a mode. And a mode is defined as the number, and it could be more than one, but it's a number appearing the most often. But to kind of recap those three, the mean, we take all of our data, we add it together, we divide it by how many values there are. The median is found by putting the numbers in order and finding the number that's in the middle. And the mode is the number that appears the most often in the data set. Now, those are three central tendencies that we can look at. Now, two other definitions I'd like to give you before we dig into this is, one is a range. And the range is, the, is defined as the difference, which means we're going to subtract. But it's the difference between the highest and lowest values. Soon in this unit, you're going to learn about words of like minimum and maximum. And so the difference between the highest and lowest values, the highest, the maximum, the lowest, the minimum. And finally, an outlier. Well, an outlier in a data set is defined as this. It's a number much farther
from other numbers. in a data set. For example, if, if you have numbers like 12 and 17 and maybe 18 and then somebody comes along with 52, 52 is an outlier. And outliers are going to really skew or change the, some of the measures of central tendency. So let's look at a situation where we have to find a few things dealing with a set of data. So the number of used cars on, on five different lots are shown. One car lot has eight cars, one has 11, one has seven, one has eight, and one has nine. And if we want to find, first of all, the mean number of, of used cars on the five different lots, here's what we would do we would first of all add the five pieces of data together and then divide by five. Now sometimes we're going to have to round so when we add these together 8 and 11 is 19, 26 we end up with 43 and so we're going to end up with 43 as the sum and we're going to divide by five and so that's going to tell us that 8.6 cars is the mean. Meaning, that's what we could expect another lot to maybe have. Now to find the median, the first thing we do is we put the numbers in order. So from smallest to largest, 7, 8, 8, 9, and 11. And the middle number appears to be, in this case, 8. The mode is the number that appears the most often. In this case, there are two weights, so that's the mode. So the mean, the median, and the mode are three ways to look at the, the, what the data t is tending to do. Now the range is found by subtracting the high, which is 11, minus the low, which is 7, and that gives us a range of 4. And the range tells us how spread out the data happens to be. Okay, so next let's look at the impact of an outlier. Remember, an outlier is a number much farther from others in a data set. And we have one, and that is 24. So to find the mean again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all of these, all the pieces of data together. So 7 plus 8 plus 8 plus 9 plus 11 plus 24 but this time I have a total of, of six numbers. And so if I add these together, it looks like I'm going to get a, a, a total this time of a 67. And I'll have to divide that by six. So uh, rounded, if I, if I divide that, it's uh, 11 point, uh, about 17 cars. So if you recall on the, the last problem, Without the 24, uh, the mean was 8.6. So that 24 really increased the mean quite a bit. But let's see what effect the, the, the 24 has on the median. Well, I've put all the numbers in order first. Uh, I've got all the numbers in order uh, from smallest to largest already. So now I'm going to find the middle. Now, a strategy to find the middle is you can cross off the smallest, cross off the biggest cross off the next smallest, cross off the next biggest. Well, this is a unique situation because there are two numbers in the middle. And so the 8 and the 9 are, are in the middle. So how do I find the median? Well, to find the median, what I would do is I would take the two numbers in the middle, add them together, and divide by 2. And this tells us that the median number of cars is 8.5. So the 24 didn't have a huge impact on the median, but it really did on the mean. Now the mode. Well, the mode is, is still 8. So the outlier didn't have an impact on the mode at all. But the range is, is a little bit more spread out. It's a bigger number. It's 24 minus 7, so the range is now 17 cars. 
So you can see the impact of an outlier. Sometimes as a teacher, we might want to use the median instead of the mean or average to see how a class does on a quiz or test. Now, last of all, you know, exams are becoming very, very common for not just for you as students, but in many occupations you have to take a test. And so you're taking a four-part exam requiring a mean score of 80% to obtain your license. Your scores in the first three parts are 84, 76, and 90. And you need, you'd like to figure out the minimum score you need on part four to pass to, to get your license. There's, there's two different ways we could do this problem. And here's the first. We could do it algebraically. And what, we could, what I mean by that is, is we could do this. Uh, don't proceed yet. So what we could do is we could take 84 plus 76 plus 90 plus some missing score. Now those four numbers added together are going to represent the total of the four scores. We're going to divide that by 4 and set it equal to 80. Now, to simplify or solve this, what I would have to do is simplify the numerator. So I'd add 84, 76, and 90 together. And that's going to give me 250. So I have 250 plus x all over 4 is equal to 80. Now, I have to do the opposite of dividing by 4, and that is multiply by 4. So I, I end up with 250 plus x, and that equals 320. So now I can take away 250, and I need a score of 70% on the fourth part to get my license. That's one way to do this problem. But there's another way to do this problem as well. And here's the alternative. So if we need a mean score of 80%, that means that I need an 80% times 4, or 320 points is what I need. Now I have to think about what I have right now. So if I add what I the three scores I have right now, 84, 76, and 90, that adds up to 250. This is what I have. So if I subtract 250 from 320, I get a score of 70% as well. This is an alternative way. To, to going through this problem. And this is something that you might encounter at some point in your life if you have to get your license or pass an exam for a job that you may have one day. So this is a preview of statistics. Central tendencies, the mean, the median, and the mode. The range and outliers. The range tells us how spread out the data is. And outliers, we have to look for outliers to see if an outlier is really going to affect the data and the tendency of the data as well. That's all I have. Go ahead and proceed to the teacher talk for this concept at this time.